I'm John Beer from John Beer Contracting, and we're back here at the Fine Home Building House in Cornwall, New York. We are going for a pretty tight house. Shooting for uh, under one ACH uh, is our goal. With that comes some caveats. Below one ACH in New York, you have to introduce mechanical ventilation for fresh air. We're using a Panasonic 100 series ERV that requires uh, return and supply ducting. So we're supplying fresh tempered air to the two offices and the three bedrooms. And we are pulling the stale return air from the second floor hallway and from the first floor living room. It was a little bit of a challenge for us to figure out the ducting patterns. While we were hoping to be able to try and contain that in some chases we had already made, we had to find a couple new routes to travel between the attic and the, the first floor. You might notice that I, um, I mentioned we're using an ERV, not an HRV. The difference between the two really comes in the exchange that happens inside the unit. HRV is just uh, recovering heat. The ERV is also recovering moisture, humidity from the air and trying to basically balance those two things from the outdoor fresh air that it's pulling in and the indoor air that it's exchanging. It's pulling energy from that stale air and using it to preheat that. So in essence, you have a slightly more efficient system in that regard. I personally love to cook. For me, the opportunity to upgrade our kitchen ventilation was huge. A typical house may have a range hood that's somewhere around 100 to 300 CFM. In this case, I opted to install a 1200 CFM range hood. I will say I may have overdone it because I had to introduce new makeup air for that hood specifically. So as we get above 600 CFM, we start bringing in fresh air to make up what we're exhausting uh, while the hood is running. So the outlet venting for the makeup air kit was something that took a lot of consideration. What we settled on was bringing the duct up through the floor in an area where we will conceal it with cabinetry and the duct will exhaust through the bulkhead above the floor to ceiling cabinets. So the idea with that is we wanted to space it far enough away so that we're not immediately dumping fresh air in that the range hood is then pulling out. We also didn't want it so far away that it creates a cross breeze as the range hood pulls air out of that space. Going into it, I needed a, to place it somewhere where I could access it easily for maintenance and repairs. That made the most sense to have it in the basement. So once we found the intake, we kind of worked backwards from there. We drilled a hole through the uh, existing basement wall. It's a cinder block construction, so the hole is pretty large, about eight inches. Obviously, I don't have a masonry hole saw that size, so we drilled a series of small holes and then broke the block through slid the intake duct in, connected the damper, figured out our rough placement of the different components. So first thing was the filter box, then we mounted the blower, then we connected to the damper to the, the intake grill. From there, when everything seemed to uh, be in the right spot, then we started making an actual ducting connections and working from intake through to the exhaust. The idea with that is it gave me the most latitude to decide the outlet location at the very end rather than starting with the outlet and working backwards. We opted to use mini splits for our heating and cooling. Our choice to go with split units versus let's say a traditional ducted system was being able to have point of use control. Room to room, we can adjust the temperature independently of one another. You know, mini splits operate best uh, with a one-to-one -one connection, one condenser, condenser for one head. The number that we ended up on was three condensers, eight units. One condenser feeds two split unit heads, the other two each feed three. We did a couple things to prep for the HVAC install. Once we decided on the split unit locations, we installed blocking for the HVAC sub, as well as the sheetrock section um, you know, that spans beyond the width of the mini split. That way they can make their final installation. Now we can commission the units, turn them on, make sure everything is functioning properly. Also at the same time, take care of our sheetrock sub, make sure they have a wide enough space to work where they can tape that seam and not worry about damaging the split unit or getting spackle all over it. We also tried to pre-plan our routes for the refrigerant and condensate lines to some degree so that our HVAC sub could have a better time installing them. I generally feel pretty confident that these units are gonna serve us well, uh, especially here in New York during the winter. We opted to upgrade the units to uh, lower operating temperature model 
So that coupled with our air tightness goals should lead to pretty comfortable indoor space throughout the year, but in particular in the winter.